to you. He go give it to you. Next go give it. Hello and welcome back to LifeTechGaming.net. We are here with a podcast. We're going to talk Deadpool, but this time we're actually going to have spoilers. So if you have not seen this, you're crazy. Turn this off. Go watch it. <laughs> Listen to the uh, spoiler-free podcast if you 100%. want. Um, but make sure you add this for later because uh, we are going to spoil everything. So spoiler <laughs> warning. As much as we can because that because there's a lot of stuff. There was a, a lot. There's of a lot, <laughs> lot of stuff in this movie. Yeah. Um, but anyways, I am Dax. With me is Darren. Hello. We have Brian. What's up? And Jeff. Hey, yo. And uh, we're going to start this off by talking about the cameos. Um, there were a lot of things going on, a lot of cool callbacks. Uh, what was everyone's favorite cameo? Oof. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm trying to think of it. So I many. gotta say that I gotta say the Brad Pitt cameo was. I missed that the first time. Oh man! Like, yeah. well, because it's only yeah. a split second. It's literally, it's yeah, it's like, holy shit, was that Brad Pitt? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It lights him up, and then you're like, well, no, oh no, no. I thought you. Okay, I saw the Brad Pitt one, but did you guys know that Matt Damon's in it? Yes, the toilet. Yeah, we were paper talking about that. Movie, yeah, but we didn't see. I missed. One. I missed. That I missed one. that one. That's the one I missed. I I saw the Brad Pitt one. Yeah. So um, where did was you... Matt Damon? He, he was, was the, the guy talking, talking about the about toilet paper. Toilet paper, and you got to use baby wipes <laughs> as the. That's the meat of it, and then you yeah. can off with a piece of toilet paper to dry yourself I totally off. Missed that. <laughs> he was like in a fat suit or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, man. And then um, it was uh, Alan Tudyk uh, right next to him, the guy that was talking with oh him. Oh, my God. He's been in, in a lot of stuff. I love Alan Tudyk. Oh, in the back of the pickup truck? <laughs> I remember. Yes. Um, yeah. But did you, guys, did you guys know that there was actually a Stan Lee cameo also? Yes. I didn't see him either. It he wasn't, wasn't him. It was, a, was, it was a painting of him yes. in the X-Mansion. Yeah, he was hanging up. <laughs> I think they also, oh yeah, yeah. Was, I there saw was that, a but I didn't know was, as well. There was he wasn't actually tag. in the film, though. Right? No, he wasn't, wasn't actually in the film, but they counted it. Yeah, well, because I think <laughs> at the time he was having his uh, his heart surgery or whatever. He was in the hospital. I yeah, this might have been right when he was in the hospital. Yeah. Well, what um, were we were we talking uh, in previous uh, gamer chats where? Uh, we discovered that Stanley's character wasn't multiple characters in all these movies, that he was actually one person tied into all the movies. Yeah, yeah what so, movie uh, What movie did he Guardians of the Galaxy Guardians, Volume 2. Guardians 2, yeah. Yes. Because he a big fan... Watchers. Yeah, a big fan theory was that he was a Watcher. Yeah. That he was uh, Uatu or whatever, yeah. like the most famous Watcher from the uh, comics. He's the one on planet Earth that hangs out on the moon and watches. Yeah, and all he does is watch. He doesn't do anything, he just watches. <laughs> um, but he's like an all-powerful being that just watches everything. Um, and so everyone thought that's who he was, and he was just, tra- he was just teleporting to different places and times because... It just seemed like he'd go anywhere. Like he, since he was in Guardians of the Galaxy one, just randomly there. That, you know, that was the biggest one. That he wasn't just some random dude. That he was, he was like traveling through space and stuff. But then actually, then they found out that he's actually just working for the Watchers. In, um, yeah, Guardians two. I think that's a really nice cool. thing to do for Stan the Man. Yeah. Yeah. And he still has the cameos they recorded for all the way up to Avengers 4, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, I think so. So we still have those waiting. Yeah. Um, after that, that's all up in the air. I know personally, as soon as it comes up in the credits and it says dedicated to Stan Lee, that's going to be the one that's going to get me. Oof. <laughs> um, did you guys notice the X-Men in the, the X-Mansion? Yes. X Men First Class. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, what was it? Quicksilver. It was Cyclops. It was Beast and um, Professor X. 
And then um, I do believe uh, Jean Grey was there too, because they had okay. been filming uh, yeah. Dark Phoenix up in Canada, I believe. Yeah. And they just recorded that thing on a green screen and then had Deadpool messing around. Yeah, and that's super easy to do. That. Well, so we were talking the other day, me and Jeff, and does Fox still have the rights to X-Men? Like all of yeah, those characters? Yes. They're still, they're, it's it's in talks right now. Okay. It's so not official. That's right. It was kind of like a mm-hmm. see how people will react, close the door kind of thing. Right, because... And the reason we got yeah. started talking about that was because uh, in this movie, yes, you guessed it, the juggernaut, bitch! Yes. <laughs> uh, did, you guys, did you guys hear who, who voices him? It was Ryan. It was Ryan Reynolds. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. pretty cool. He did the yeah. mocap and everything. Yeah, initially they were just like, hey, let's just do, like, go ahead, do the mocap, do the voice. And we'll get a voice actor to fill in at the end, and because we just want to get it like pretty much almost done before we find an actor. And then they were just like, "Oh, well, Ryan did such a good job. We don't need to do it." Like, yeah, he was coming up with crazy <laughs> improv lines, and they're like, "Yeah, yeah. This is too good. We can't do this." Yeah. yeah. So that's that's what we we're talking about because you know Juggernauts and X Men. Mm-hmm. United or whatever it was called. Yeah. Um, and now he's in this movie, and so mm-hmm. we're going, okay, well, if they don't have the rights to the X-Men characters. How did, how did Juggernaut get in here? Well, this is a strictly Fox film, and strict, like this is all within the yeah. X-Men universe, universe, which is owned by Fox. So you still had Colossus. He was in Deadpool 1, Deadpool 2, and then he was back in, ev- I think he's in every X-Men movie. Yeah, I'm not that's sure if right. The uh, not the one. first one. Yeah, mm-hmm. not the first one, but definitely the second and third. Second, third, Days uh, Days of Future Past. Days of Future Past, yeah. Um, it's a different guy and, yeah. like, different Colossus look. But, yeah. And I think it's really funny that the fact that they do the X-Men first class, it kind of messes up the timeline completely, throws you off balance. Well, the Deadpool timeline is insane. Like, basically, we've got, we've got like four timelines with the X-Men universe. We have the original three X-Men. We have the first class universe. We have um, the Deadpool universe and we have the Logan universe. Because right. technically Logan's not part of all of it either. So now, here's something that they took uh, Professor X at the end of X Men, uh, the third one, uh, that they actually had his body or his mind was transferred to his brother's body or something, and that's why he kind of it's his twin brother, and so he looks like an older <laughs> Professor X because it's that body that they switched him over to. Or something crazy but like that's that. That's not what happened in that X Men Three. That's yeah. not what happened in X Men Three because we actually saw that guy's face. Yeah. It was a different person. So no, I, like I, that's why I'm like, no, Logan. Well, like Logan is a different. <laughs> well, it's they different. also had that altogether. Easter egg at the very beginning. They had that like music um, box or whatever that had the Logan statue of whenever he died. At the mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, but basically Deadpool his universe exists outside of all of the other ones, but are also included in all of them. Oh, okay. That's what's crazy. That's like, what I mean, all these we, might as, we might as well yeah. cut to the chase and talk about that post credit scene where he goes and <laughs> completely destroys every single timeline and goes yeah. through and just messes around. Because now we don't even know, like, because of all that time travel, we don't even know what timeline he's in like we don't know like wh- if they actually do another deadpool movie will like vanessa be alive will she be dead yeah. well you know we don't know yeah. any of that it, it's just i think it was just all fan service and probably none of it is canon technically. well it could be so. like you said he could have used it to basically once they actually do get the rights to some of these other movies he could actually just be teleported into those timelines yeah i yeah, did I think, read something that's yeah. uh the directors or some of the higher ups that actually have merit they said that 
everything that happened in the post credit scenes is canon. Yeah, and I saw that too, uh, but... I don't know no. if that's like a legit <laughs> thing because yeah. Ryan Reynolds is dead, according to that. He got <laughs> shot right before he signed the contract for the Green Lantern contract. Yeah, so <laughs> Ryan Reynolds is dead. Original Deadpool is dead. What happened? Like, <laughs> like, there's so much that like that happened in that um i don't know if that means uh, also he went back in time with the x-force i don't know if that means that yeah he saved peter that, saw that. he saved he saved peter but i don't know if he talked about anyone any, else. anybody else so yeah. we'll talk about that later but <laughs> i don't want to go too much into that right now um but yeah so so that's what i'm saying is does does that basically just negate everything that happened almost in deadpool because if, well, first of all, if Vanessa didn't die, where's his motivation? Where is his motivation, and why would he bring together like the X Force? Why would he do all yeah. of what happened in the movie? I, it's a big. That's what I'm saying. Is how can it be canon when it's not right. like? <laughs> when it's it's it doesn't make any sense. But that's kind of Deadpool. So I, I yeah, it, back through the panels to something else and be like, oh, I want that chimichanga. But I, I think, <laughs> I think himself. almost it was just fan service. And yeah. then if they do another movie or if they join Marvel and do a Deadpool movie there, I think it's just a, oh, Deadpool messed with the timeline, so anything can happen. Yeah, we can do everything is possible. Now. Yeah, <laughs> because. Um, did you also, I, I don't know if you guys saw, but um, people were comparing set photos of Deadpool and Avengers 4. Uh, the Avengers have little uh, things on their hands that look very similar to Cable's time-traveling little device. Oh. And there is, it's been suspected that the Avengers are doing time travel in Avengers 4 to try to stop Thanos and fix the things that happened in Infinity War. So, I don't know. <laughs> that seems so complicated. Uh -huh. I like I... to think, though, that they're not going to touch anything that has to do with Deadpool and Fox just because oh, it's like they, they want to focus on what they've done already. And yeah. so it's they said, like, like movies, it's going like to be the Quantum movie. Realm, Ant-Man, and all that's going to come into play so they can jump through the quantum realm and then go to another timeline or use the barf technology to see what <laughs> happens in the past. The I feel like they'll technology. play on that. Yeah, that's the uh, Civil War um, when Iron Man creates the barf and he's like, I gotta come up with a better name like bioactive oh. retrofitter, <laughs> whatever it was. Yeah, I barf. I forgot about that. <laughs> oh. Um... All right, moving on. Let's talk uh, some Easter eggs. Um, okay. My favorite was how uh, we're hinting more and more towards Mister Sinister, almost like he's going to be the Thanos oh of Deadpool. Literally, like constantly, constantly, yeah. we're talking about Mister Sinister, and not just but in they're not saying Mr. In X Men even. It's just Essex. Every there's time. so there's so many people that everyone's thought, oh, this is Mister Sinister. Oh, this is Mister Sinister. But we're just like literally Essex is everywhere. Um, there was a scene in um, what was it, was it uh, Apocalypse? Yes, with Essex Core. Yeah, that was their post credit. There was Essex there. There was Essex um, in the first one because that's that company that basically created Deadpool. Yeah, and then of course the Essex uh, whatever school um, oh, in this sure. one. Yeah, um, and that's that's a big that's a big deal. Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, probably most people don't know this, but in the comics, uh, Cable was actually created by Mister Sinister. Um, that that I, they didn't even. I'm amazed they didn't even touch on this in the movie, um, but. But there's also a reason why. But um, Cable's parents are Cyclops and a clone of Jean Grey. And so he was literally a test tube baby with their DNA put together. Hmm. 
and then he came back from the future. So, yeah, because uh, he gets a techno virus, and techno basically virus. they're like, "Your baby's about to die. He will mm-hmm. die unless we take him two thousand years into the future." Yeah, and Cyclops is like, "Well, I don't want my baby to die, so I guess I'll trust you, <laughs> lady from the future. Take my child." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I think we probably need a whole like section um section of this where we talk about the history of Cable. Yeah, yeah because definitely. he is so complex. Yes, and huge, and there's a lot of stuff. But we'll we should go into that later. Um, um anybody anybody else have any other cameos? You really or was it cameos? What were you on? Cameos, Easter eggs, all Easter that eggs. Stuff. Anybody else have any Easter eggs they really liked? Oh. Oof. I think uh, I was I was just so focused on the fact that you know Juggernaut was going to be in the movie, and I just mm-hmm. knew that they were going to do it right, not with yeah. this prosthetic suit. And, <laughs> now, um, Jeff, did you hear what he said about his brother? He, I did, I did. So he is the half brother of Charles Xavier. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad they I'm glad they touched on and, that. Yes. I'm so glad they touched him. I didn't on that. know that either. That's yeah. the whole reason why he's wearing the helmet. That, yeah, that's why he's always awesome. wearing the helmet. My little brother's yeah, in the that was... Darren, you haven't was... watched X Men cartoons? They literally <laughs> went over all that in the cartoons. Like both, I probably like, did, but I probably don't remember the specific. Both the like the ninety two version and, and X Men Evolution. Holds up. That, oh my god. I, think I watched X Men Evolution cartoons. though. Yeah, Evolution they talked about it too. Okay. Yeah, because Juggernaut came in like a couple of times, and like especially in that one, they had uh, in Evolution they had like um, Nightcrawler and all that stuff, and they would try to get Nightcrawler to take off the helmet, like and stuff like that. So, well, um, and I was saying earlier that um, I didn't even expect that. I mean, Juggernaut to be in this. I was okay, only yeah. thinking that Cable was the bad guy, and that was it. <laughs> that's what the the trailers um, yeah. alluded to, and um, then all of a sudden about, there's this giant, giant juggernaut. I'm like, what the heck is yeah. this guy? <laughs> now um, I saw something uh, when they released the soundtrack, and oh. it was uh, I don't remember exactly what the title of the track is called, but it's basically here come your you can't mess with fuck with the juggernaut or something like that oh, that's, oh. that's the song that's playing where it's like holy shit yeah. balls <laughs> um well i watched yeah. um, a trailer breakdown and they actually had in 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 the trailer a quick little shot of that scene where uh colossus grabs the the spike off the fence Mm, and he yeah. goes to stab him in the eye. Mm. There's actually a, a quick little shot of that, wow. and you can see the right. helmet. I, and I, right then and there, I was like, "That's got to be Juggernaut." So I kind of spoiled it for myself, but I was yeah, still yeah. really excited to uh, see that play out. And mm-hmm. it didn't disappoint. I mean, it was really yeah, good. No, it was so uh, focusing on that, I kind of I obviously missed <laughs> a bunch of shit CGI because. I missed, I missed Matt Damon. I'm like, where the hell was Matt Damon? I don't, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? Um, about, about when did you guys figure out it was Juggernaut in when the movie? he broke free of the cage. So you literally, <laughs> you found out when you saw him. Yes. Dax, when did you I, find figure it out? Um, It was the uh, soundtrack, and then I... I watched a uh, breakdown from Nerdist News, okay. and they were so, talking about how it's probably from the trailer scene. Okay, totally I wasn't spoiled, but I figured it out when Black Tom Cassidy showed up in the movie. Because right, uh, right. yeah, because Black Tom and Juggernaut Black Jim. <laughs> are always they're all they always hang out together. So in the um, in the right. comics, yeah. where one of them is there, the other one's there. Um, like basically, as a child, one of my favorite comics that I had was um, the Juggernaut was literally losing his powers, and he had to go back to like the gem of Citarac or whatever and touch it again, which gave him his powers initially because he's not a mutant. 
Right. I know they use him in X Men, but he's not a mutant. Um, and so and so that was like one of my favorite comics as a kid. And Black Tom was was helping him get to the 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 uh, gem, and they had to go through Doctor Strange to get it. And it was a really cool comic. Um, but the moment I saw Black Tom. And then I was like, is Juggernaut going to be in this movie? Because they have to go together. Like, literally, you can't have Black Tom without uh, Juggernaut. And then when I heard that big boom, I'm like, oh, that's Juggernaut in the basement. (laughs) I knew it immediately. Like, I was like, yeah, yeah. So the rest, from then to when he was revealed, I was like, come on, just just do it already. (laughs) Like, um, but yeah, I mean, that was... Like and then um, I also but heard then, that, but then he gets he gets a shot right between the eyes. I know, and dies all of a sudden. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So he's gone. Well, you know, That's... actually, Black Tom was supposed to be the villain of the movie, is what I heard, and that yeah, actually he was supposed to be like insanely super powered and like super tough. And then the studio said, uh, "This is going to cost way too much money to make him the villain." And so then they're just like, okay. And then they had already hired the actor. So they're like, um, you okay with just being a minor character? And he's like, sure, why not? So, yeah. yeah I, that was just, it was kind of disappointing that he just got killed off really fast. But. Well, and, uh, it was, I always am re- reminded of that episode in. Um, what was the title of that X Men episode, Brian? Which one? Uh, the N Encron Crystal Crystal episode. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's the episode where they capture the Shi'ar Empress. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And Tom, Black Tom, and Juggernaut are the ones that kidnap her. Mm-hmm. And so that's what reminded me when I saw that. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> they were in the cartoon together. Yeah. Yep. So you're right. They were, they were always uh, pals like from prison. Mm-hmm. But the, the best part about that episode was when Gladiator shows up. You guys remember Gladiator? Yes. Yeah. The purple guy with the mohawk. so juggernaut goes to punch this guy right in his chest and the guy doesn't even budge yeah he's basically he's basically superman so i kind of felt like that's the strength level that uh he was at in this movie Mm -hmm. he could have been more i don't know it, it seemed like that fight with colossus was really was really awesome. I'm not saying it was bad, but it seemed like really Colossus would have lost that fight <laughs> <laughs> if we were, you know, um, going yeah, doing a death, a real death battle. Well, yeah, actually, he's unstoppable. If, if you go, if you go into the comics, literally Colossus has lost every battle with Juggernaut unless he was helped by someone else. But he so. even got his power one time. He was the unstoppable boss. Yes, Colossus. yes. But that was also because basically Juggernaut lost his power and was given to Colossus. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> when um, uh, when Colossus and uh, Negasonic and all mm-hmm. them they took out Juggernaut in this movie and they yeah. took that electrical cable and they shoved it. Shut someone in the uh, someone in That's the how audience was like, Russia. "Oh my god!" <laughs> <laughs> it was probably me right there. <laughs> yeah. Um, did, did you, you get... notice about the Yukio? Yeah, that's about to say. That's what I was about to say too. Did you guys notice? Yukio? Um, oh yeah. That. That that's um, the name girlfriend? of the same one from the Wolverine. Yeah, like, the girl, okay. the red-haired girl from. Mm-hmm. The red-haired girl from Wolverine is also Yukio, and um, and so the and then um, I looked it up, and the director said 
that yes, it is the same Yukio, but different universe, basically. Okay. Okay, so, so like that's... the original Yukio from the comics is more like the one from the Wolverine. Right. And this is their own interpretation that is a mutant. So it's, it's just funny that they bring in the girl who's like said that you're going to die and this is how you're going to die. And then Wolverine <laughs> dies in Logan that way. And that's how we open up Deadpool 2. And the whole time it's like, hi, Yukio. Mm, yeah. That's why that he was... liked saying it. Oh that much. my God. It's like, you're the one who killed Wolverine. Hi, yeah. Yukio. And just like the whole contrast between how she loved Wade, but neg- her, but her girlfriend, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, hates Wade a hundred percent. It was just really funny, I think. Yeah, like, isn't this gonna piss Cable off? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Um, now, what about all the uh, the MCU callbacks that they had? How we're talking about uh, mm. Black Black Widow, Brown Panther. <laughs> <laughs> The yeah, grumpy well, old fucker with a Winter Soldier arm. Didn't he say? Yeah, didn't he <laughs> say Thanos too? Yeah, yeah Thanos. Thanos. <laughs> yeah, no. The, the belt was I think real I, spe- big guy. I specifically think the uh, Black Black Widow thing was kind of like a call out to all the people who complained about the race change of yeah. Domino. Um, because okay. literally, it's it was kind of like saying, hey. If she was white, like she is in the comics, we would just be doing Black Widow again. Yeah. But since she's, you know, she's black and she's got different, you know, she's got the fro, she's got, um, like, a different, like, mentality and a different attitude, all these things that it's original, you know, at least a little bit. Right. You know, <laughs> you know it was just kind of like, like, seriously, just get over it. Like... <laughs> Zazzy Beats like did a ridiculously good job with Domino. So oh, she was amazing. Oh my god, <laughs> that was like one of my favorite parts. She's so good. She oh, and I love that truck. Oh my god, I love the fact that they they literally said like, what like you have luck powers that that's not very cinematic. And then yes. literally they did the most freaking cinematic scene ever. Of the whole movie. Of the movie. <laughs> I love that because, like, seriously, like, you know, every everyone shits on um, Domino because of that, um, and you know, basically in the comics, Scarlet Witch, her powers basically start off the same way, but she okay. has to like because literally her powers are um, oh god, I only remember uh, probability changing, so okay. she can change the probability that like. If you say like, "Hey, there's like a bullet coming at her," she can change the probability that it will miss, or the probability it will deteriorate into nothing. So she can change that, and it's never. It used to be like super unreliable, and then she became like stronger and stronger over the over time, and got super powerful. But like, obviously, that kind of stuff isn't cinematic, so they had to change her powers for the MCU. So that's why <laughs> I think that was also a little bit of a call out to that too. Okay. Um, so yeah. well, and thank God for your guys' sakes that uh, she wasn't one of the ones that just immediately died. Oh my! Right God. after the team was forged, I'm wondering if uh, they actually killed her off because they went back and did a bunch of reshoots and put in a bunch more Domino and. Uh, cable scenes and so I'm wondering if originally like they literally murdered everyone <laughs> and everybody died and it's just Deadpool I'm thinking maybe the reshoots might have been the taxi scenes oh, okay because really the um, first of all those jokes weren't that great so they kind of seemed like they were thrown in at the end yeah personally so, That's my biggest issue with this movie is how many jokes they were just throwing out as many as possible just to hope that out of the seven jokes four will hit. Four yeah, and I think that's what I think that's what we were saying is Deadpool was much more dense with jokes and they hit better and um but yeah, I think I think that's basically like um 
when one thing I was very disappointed about was uh, Negasonic Teenage Warheads lines. Yeah. They were not as good as they were in the first one. It kind of seemed a little disappointing because I really liked her character in the first one. But Justin guess, Bieber. <laughs> yeah. I guess they had so many. In training. I guess because <laughs> he, he was the straight man um, in the first one for yeah. all the jokes. Where, you know, she was just not the funny one and but the things she said were funny in context and stuff like that. But there's so many other straight man characters in this one that she wasn't needed almost. Yeah. You know, like they, you had Domino, you had Cable, you know, didn't really need it, didn't really need to add any more to that. So. They didn't need to do that to, um, was it Shatterstar? Shatterstar, yeah. They did not need to do that to him. <laughs> Yeah, I that thought he went pretty quickly. Completely yeah. fucked up. They built him up. I mean, he had I have, blood. I have the uh, ten-inch action figure sitting in my room right now. Oh, is it and is it old school Shatterstar? Yep, mm. blonde hair. No, oh. <laughs> no, yeah, I know. White, was, red and uh, white suit. Yeah, out of all of the X Force members, other than you know, of course, Deadpool and Domino, Shatterstar was the, he's the most famous out of all of them, and he really they really should. I wish they had kept him, but who knows? Maybe with the timeline stuff, he's still alive. Yeah, maybe the whole X Force team will show up. Maybe, like but uh, I don't know if, uh, or they're just gonna do a whole new X X Force if they do continue with you know if Fox continues without Marvel or Marvel takes over Fox or whatever I really so. hope that no matter what they're like okay Deadpool we're just going to keep you in your little bubble you could do all the rated R yeah. spinoffs you want just don't touch our stuff too bad like be nice don't talk <laughs> they, they already had Disney. they already had to cut a bunch of stuff did you hear yeah. about that yeah, yeah. Um, basically what I've heard is, okay, basically they can't say anything definite because the deal isn't 100% through. Right. But I heard that Disney executives have been looking into a rated R brand. And so, and they were saying that they were saying that Deadpool could be the start of that. I mean, Deadpool just made more money than or Deadpool yeah. 2 made more money than Deadpool. So. I think it would be crazy for them not to. Yeah, if they went to PG-13 for Deadpool, I don't think as many people would go and see it. Definitely not. You can't Well, do yeah, that. or just not or recast Deadpool or just not yeah. have Deadpool movies. Like yeah. literally that cash cow they should not turn away from and they shouldn't mess with it. No, it's a special niche. You got to keep that strong. Yeah. Um you know, I think they should almost do what like what what Amazon does whenever they take over a company. They just kind of like let they just buy their product so they can sell it, and just let the company run the way it runs. So, and I and I think that's what they should do specifically with Deadpool, not so much X Men, but Deadpool. <laughs> so, um, but you know, I I've heard there's possibility that the the merger might not happen even. Um, yeah, there's some speculations with Comcast and all that fun business. Yeah. Well, I'm looking on the uh, box office mojo, and mm-hmm. right now, after only being out for, uh, what, a week for Deadpool 2, it's already crossed the threshold of just over half of... Uh, the entire worldwide lifetime gross for Deadpool made. So yeah. it and has, not even has the potential the of, of passing pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Um, what else? I was going to say something else about some more characters that showed up. Um, what about that invisible guy? The oh yeah! Back. Oh, you mean Brad Bandit? Was that a uh, 
Yeah, the Vanisher. That was Vanisher. Brad Pitt's cameo. Was that an actual character, or was that just? A yeah, they're all they're all yes, actual characters. No. Okay. He was not invisible though. He just moves really fast and kind of disappears. But he wasn't like yeah. always invisible. They did this <laughs> specifically because they're like, well, we could throw in whoever and just record yeah. some special cameo and get someone famous. I thought and that's how they got when Brad Pitt. the parachute jumped out by itself was icing on the cake i was just like what <laughs> yeah. <is the> actual <laughs> for a while i thought they were going to do um just make everyone crazy and there's not actually someone there, like the whole yeah. time <laughs> um but yeah, the interview was awesome they're like is he here like no yeah. he's stuck in traffic he's not. <laughs> how would you know he's in this <laughs> how would you know but no like um i actually kind of like that because um uh the anime my hero academia um, if you guys don't know, it's basically the movie Sky High, but in anime form. Um, it's a it's a school for superheroes and yeah. stuff like that. Um, but they've been having this ongoing thing like that for the past two years, where it's a a superhero where their their superpower is that they're invisible, and there's actual like parts in it where like you know the whole class is there except for that that character because usually if you see her she's got just gloves on and so you can see the gloves and then they're like they'll they'll like put her in at the end where where they're like oh man where were you i didn't see you and she's like oh i just took off my gloves i was there the whole time (laughs) you know kind of thing like i was there watching yeah there's just a whole there's just an ongoing gag and i was like and i was like kind of you know that also um yeah it sounds really similar yeah (laughs) yeah but you know they they probably didn't know about it um but no i love that that it just kind of was just very similar so it had the same beats and everything i really liked it what about the guy who spits acid they didn't oh yeah that that. that was it that was uh Bill Skarsgård. Yeah, yeah, that was the guy who plays it. it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's no, like he's, he was he was an actual movie. member of. See, all these characters were actual members of X Force at one point. Okay. Uh, not so saying they're they were original. Base, and then they killed them off because they didn't really fit with the rest of the. Story. Yeah, but also they weren't the original members, and they also weren't ongoing or good members of the x-force okay. now here's so... my theory on why they actually killed them all off is because this is like the sequel the superhero team up and they're like oh well what do you do for a deadpool superhero team up you kill all the guys that are in the team up and you just focus <laughs> on deadpool yeah and they brought it back like a little bit because I, I don't know about you. I was not ready for them to kill everybody off I, like that. Although I when they said wind either. advisory, I was like, I turned to Brittany <laughs> and I'm like, there's no way they're about to do this. I'm like what? I'm like, <laughs> they're going to kill everybody. <laughs> um, I almost think it's like testing waters to see if the fans that aren't comic fans are ready for an X-Force movie. Yeah. And then well, we're going to bring in the right, big X-Force the, characters. The three would have had to be an X-Force like, yeah, it would have had to be an X Force movie if they survived. Yeah, yeah, but I think it, yeah, it was just like testing the waters. Like, what do you guys think about an actual X Force movie, but with good characters? You know, we can add the main characters. We got you know, we got Donna, we got Deadpool, we got Cable. Um, we can add people like Warpath, um, Will Spain. There's a bunch of other characters that we could add. Next movie with the good characters and not like these weird lame characters. <laughs> so, and I, that's what I think it was because, of course, everyone who's read X Force is gonna be like, "Hell yeah, do an X Force movie!" But, um, but those those who just go see the Deadpool movies and the X Men movies are gonna be like, "What the fuck is an X Force?" <laughs> you, know? Well, you know what, Brian? This is actually a good <laughs> time to uh, sign off on this podcast so we can talk about the future speculations of Deadpool, the X-Men, X-Force, what's going to happen with Cable, and then also all the crazy time travel and uh, retcons that happen. Um, any last words for anyone on this uh, Easter eggs? Um, um, there- oh, I'm good. I, I saw an article that said that there is over 600 
Easter eggs, cameos, callouts, and whatnot. So, oh, yeah. Yes, thanks, everybody. Remember, go to youtube.com slash lifetechgaming. Subscribe, like our videos, hit your notification bell. Uh, you can follow us on facebook.com slash lifetechgaming. And we're always on lifetechgaming.net. 